Seven chapter text number thirty. Page number three sixty two. Sadi Buddha di Daiva Mam Sadi Yagyam Chaye Viduhu Prayana Kalepi Chamam Devi Dur Yukta Cheta Saha Sadi Buddha di Daiva Mam Sade yagyam chaye viduhu Prayana kalepi chamam Devi dur yukta cheta saha Sade bhuta di daivam mam Sade yagyam chaye viduhu Prayana Kalepi Chamam Devi Duryukta Cheta Saha Sa Adibhuta And the governing principle of the material manifestation Adi Daivam, governing all the demigods. Mam, me, Sa Adi Yagyam, and governing all sacrifices. Cha, also, ye, those who, vidu, know, prayana, of death. Kale at the time api even cha and mam me te dei vidu no yukta chetasaha the mind engaged in me. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Sila Isi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. Shri Prabhupada Ki. Translation. Those in full consciousness of me, who know me, the Supreme Lord, to be the governing principle of the material manifestation of the demigods and of all methods of sacrifice, can understand and know me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even at the time of death. Purport. Persons acting in Krishna consciousness are never deviated from the path of entirely understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the transcendental association of Krishna consciousness, one can understand how the Supreme Lord is the governing principle of the material manifestation and even the demigods. Gradually, by such transcendental association, one becomes convinced of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and at the time of death, such a Krishna conscious person can never forget Krishna. Naturally is thus promoted to the planet of the Supreme Lord, Golok Brindavan. This seventh chapter particularly explains how one can become a fully Krishna conscious person. The beginning of Krishna consciousness is association of persons who are Krishna conscious. Such association is spiritual and puts one directly in touch with the Supreme Lord. And by His grace one can understand Krishna to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
at the same time one can really understand the constitutional position of the living entity and how the living entity forgets Krishna and becomes entangled in material activities. By gradual development of Krishna consciousness in good association, the living entity can, under can understand that due to forgetfulness of Krishna, he has become conditioned by the laws of material nature. He can also understand that this human form of life is an opportunity to regain Krishna consciousness and that it should be fully utilized to attain the causeless mercy of the Supreme Lord. Many subjects have been discussed in this chapter. The man in distress, the inquisitive man, the man in want of material necessities, knowledge of Brahman, knowledge of Paramatma, liberation from birth, death and diseases, and worship of the Supreme Lord. However, he who is actually elevated in Krishna consciousness does not care for the different processes. He simply directly engages himself in activities of Krishna consciousness <coughs> and thereby factually attains his constitutional position as an eternal servitor of Lord Krishna. In such a situation he takes pleasure in hearing and glorifying the Supreme Lord in pure devotional service. He is convinced that by his doing so all his objectives will be fulfilled. This determined fate is called Dridavrata, and it is the beginning of Bhakti Yoga or transcendental loving service. That is the verdict of all scriptures. The seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is the substance of that conviction. Thus and the Bhaktivedanta purports to the seventh chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of Knowledge of the Absolute. Oma Jnana Timidandasya Jnana Jnana Salakaya Chakshodan Miritam Yanam Dasmai Si Gurve Namaha Si Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Sapadantikam Bandeham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Padakamanan Si Gurund Vaishnavamscha Sidupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sadibam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sidadha Krishna Padam Sagana Lalita Sri Vishagan Vidam Sham He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagat Pade Gopesha Gopika Ganta Radha Kanta Namastude Tatta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshari Vrishabhano Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Manchakalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyahevacha Parita Nampavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Gadadhara Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Bhuta Di Daiva Maam Adi Yagyam Chaye Vidu Payana kala picha maam te vidur yukta cheta saha. Those in full consciousness of me who know me, the Supreme Lord, to be the governing principle of the material manifestation of the demigods and of all, all methods of sacrifice, can understand and know me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even at the time of death. So. 
here um, Krishna is speaking to Arjuna and, and mentioning actually what is very important that uh, one has to be in full consciousness of Krishna actually throughout one's life and then even at the time of death then naturally one will be able to remember Krishna and then one will be as Prabhupada has explained then will be one will be naturally promoted to to the spiritual realm to Golok Vrindavan mm. so of course first of all one has to know that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead mm. so that is some Bandagyan uh, and as explained here and throughout the Bhagavad Gita Bhaktarang Yagitapa Sam Sarva Loko Maheshwaram Suridam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatvam Am Shantim Ritshati so if one wants to be peaceful then one should know that Krishna is the actual enjoyer uh, and that we are meant to serve him and that is the lord of all the planets of all the living entities and Suridam Sarva Bhutanam and that is the best friend uh, so first one has to know that is the supreme lord and then that we are his servants and then we are meant to serve him as even in explained in Navavida Bhakti, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Parasevanam, Achanam, Vandanam, Dasyam. So one is hearing about Krishna, one is getting transcendental knowledge. Uh, and then one may glorify the Lord. First one has to hear, then one can speak about Krishna. Uh, and one has to hear, Tadvidi Paripatina Prayaprasna Seva Yopadikshadide Gyanam Gyaninas Tadvadarshana. One has to approach a tattva darshanaha. And a devotee who is realized, darshan of param tattva of Krishna, one who is darshan of the Supreme Lord, the pure devotee, representative of the Lord. And as Prabhupada has explained in the purport, so one has to go to a devotee. And then in his, his association one can advance. Uh, and uh, so we cannot directly approach Krishna, serve Krishna. But we have to go through the devotee, uh, who is an associate of the Lord, uh, who is advanced. And one has to serve him. Tadvidi paripatena. So in very humble way. And ask questions. Uh, and then by serving and then asking questions, then the spiritual master being merciful and he will give transcendental knowledge uh, being pleased yasya prasada bhagava prasado and if the spiritual master is pleased then Krishna is pleased uh, and then after later by the mercy of the spiritual master uh, when the disciple is serious then he is able to serve Krishna just like even practically a sadarkas and now practicing devotees so first we approach the spiritual master and then he will introduce us to Sambandha Gyan the actual position of the Supreme Lord and our position that we are the servants Jivera Sopo Initera Krishna Das Krishnera Nitya Das uh, so then we engage in various services uh, by the most of the spiritual master and after some time we may get initiated and then we may get the uh, second initiation, Brahminical initiation, by which we can serve the deities in the temple and directly approach the Lord in the Archavigra, who is not different from Krishna and the spiritual realm and is coming in this form to accept our service uh, so we may be able to uh, approach him uh, and it is a kind of practice uh, just like uh, nowadays everywhere there is first apprenticeship, you go in a big company, you do some apprenticeship and you learn to do the things. 
And then after some time you are recognized of one year or two years or three years, you are uh, then accepted as a full-time uh, servant of the company or worker in the company. But first there is some kind of apprenticeship you have to learn. And uh, so similarly, first we have to be under the guidance of the spill master, then we may worship the deities, and then uh, we may be able to make more advancement by hearing about Krishna and chanting the holy names, and then one can um, actually realize that um, the Krishna and Krishna Nam or the Achavigra are non different from Krishna in Golok, uh, Krishna in the heart. So, so that is actually the beginning stage. So when one is understanding that we are the servant of Krishna, completely apart from the gross and subtle body, a spirit soul. But then seva sadaka rupena siddha rupena chatrahi tad bhavarup sarakarya vrajalokana sarataha. That um, so sadakas. So we are serving, chanting the holy names, worshipping the deities. So that is the beginning stage actually. Sadhana bhakti, vaidhi bhakti, following the rules and regulations. So we may become fixed, as explained here also, that we have to be fixed uh, in, this, uh, in this understanding. Drida vataha. So, so the, the, the consciousness is fixed. Nishta. Uh, come to this platform of Nishta. Seva Nishta, Nam Nishta, being absorbed. Uh, and uh, avoiding sense gratification. Being relatively free from anattas, from unwanted things. Uh, so then one can uh, advance more. And as explained, so this uh, first limbs are there of Navavida Bhakti, Shavanam, Kirtanam, hearing and then chanting and then we can remember and then we can serve the Lord. Parasevanam and then Archanam in the temple also and then Vandanam, then we go on glorifying with selected verses like the Brahma Samhita for the pleasure of the Lord or um, and then Preman Jana Chodida Bhakti Vilochanena Santa Sadeva Hira Yeshu Viloka Yanti Yam Shama Sundarama Chintu Gunasarupam Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. So when we worship Govinda Dev, so when we come in the beginning stage, Sambandagyan is there, Madan Mohan, who is attracting us, uh, who is attractive, uh, more beautiful than Cupid. Kamadev, and then by becoming attracted to Krishna, then we can become detached from these uh, material allurements, and then uh, especially from this uh, bhotik, from this material uh, attraction to the opposite sex. Uh, and then we can um, be somewhat steady, nishta, and then we can come to the platform of Abhideya Gyan of practicing under the guidance of the spiritual master, practicing devotional activities. And then, Siddha Rupana Chattrahi, then we can be more situated on the transcendental platform, Atma Tattva, of the soul, of our self, as the Satchinananda Sarup. And then we worship Govinda Dev, Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami, as explained by Lord Brahma in the Brahma Samhita, which is to be chanted, which is recommended to be chanted while worshipping the Lord. Uh, and there Lord Brahma is mm, offering prayers and saying, Aham Bhajami, I'm worshipping, Bhajan. I'm doing Bhajan of Govinda, Govinda Dev. Mm. And then when the love is there manifested in the pure consciousness, purified consciousness, premanjana churita bhakti vilochanena, bhakti by bhakti, then one has the transcendental eyes, by which santa sadeva ridhyeshu viloka yanti, santa sadeva always, in the heart, we can see shamsundar, achintiguna sarupam, 
It was of a beautiful form, most beautiful. It is actually a chinta sarup, it is transcendental to this material world. Uh, so when we are situated on the transcendental platform, then we can perceive Shama Sundar. When this love is there in the purified consciousness. And even in the matter of worshipping the deities, we can worship the deities properly when we are transcendentally situated on the transcendental platform. Then we can worship the Satchinananda Sarup of the Archa Vigraha. And then there is a loving exchange. So that is the Nabideya Gyan. Uh, and then one can understand everything clearly as it is. So we are studying the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Uh, so Prabhupada is clearly explaining, therefore he called it the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Because before there were so many editions of Bhagavad Gita by so many scholars, uh, maybe even so-called scholars, because they are not really scholars, if they don't understand Krishna properly as he is, and are able to uh, give the message as Krishna wanted, as it is. Uh, so Prabhupada is a pure devotee, he um, properly explained everything so that we can clearly and easily understand Krishna's position, our position and the process of devotional service uh, free from all inabilities. Uh, so that is also one kind of anatta, four kinds of anatta. Uh, first is Swarup Brahma. So having not the proper understanding of Krishna Sarup, our Sarup and the process of devotional service. So that has to be removed. By the mercy of the spiritual master is removed, who is uh, re revealing this knowledge. And then by the Lord himself, who is there in heart as Chaitya Guru, Paramatma, he is guiding us. So from inside and from outside as the Diksha or Shiksha Guru. So that we can advance on the path of pure devotional service. So we can go to a higher level. So Abhideya Gyan, where we worship Govinda Dev. And then even higher, when one is firmly fixed, so first Sadhana Bhakti is there following the rules and regulations. And then one, when one is fixed, then we can adopt the process which is given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Kali Yuga Vatar. Uh, so, of course, first of all, right from the beginning by chanting the holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So we chant the holy names and follow the rules and regulations, hear about Krishna, serve the deities, then we can advance more and more. And then when we are uh, able to chant properly, uh, when Nam Ruchi is there, taste for chanting the only names, then uh, there will be some revelations. And then when he is able to advance more, uh, Abhideya Gyan, Abhideya Tattva, uh, by the mercy of Rupa Goswami especially, who is the Acharya for this uh, Abhideya Gyan, but of course he has given everything from Sambandha Gyan to Payojan Gyan, but specifically he has given knowledge for the Sadaka so they may advance more and more and they may be entered to then uh, after following the rules and regulations under the guidance of Spiritual Master Vaidhi Bhakti as part of Sarana Bhakti, the p first part, then they may be able to enter into a higher realm known as Raghunuga Bhakti and as of course Rupa Goswami is empowered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Radha and Krishna is their eternal associate. Uh, so he has uh, presented what Mahaprabhu wanted to give the whole world, what he has given the whole world. Uh, and that is ultimately, so the chanting of the holy names, but with which bhav, what bhav, what consciousness, what mood, so that he has himself explained. Uh, so he came to give actually this Braj Bhakti. Uh, and there also, of course, Anarpita Charim Chiraka and Avatana Kala Samara Panuru Jalam Savakti Sriyam. Unad Ujjalaras, especially the highest form, and that is the, uh, that is the love of the gopis 
for uh, towards Krishna. The gopis love that is most exalted. Uh, but basically to give braj bhav, so and those who are then following the uh, the footsteps of the bridge buses, so then they may enter into what is known as Raganuga Bhakti, as part of Sadhana Bhakti. Uh, but when one is a little bit fixed, Drirvataha, Nishta, when that is there, and then one may slowly try to uh, understand uh, the transcendental moods of Mother Yashoda, the friends, or the beloved of Krishna. Uh, and then in consciousness think of them, but externally still following the rules and regulations that has to be always followed. Uh, so for us to be uh, safely situated and to set the example for others. But then the consciousness is changed. Uh, as Mahaprabhu has told also to Raghunath Das Goswami, he was known as the Acharya of Priyojan Gyan, the highest stage of devotional service, where we approach Gopinath, Radha, Gopinath, Krishna, or who has many names according to his wonderful qualities and pastimes. Yashoda Nandan is the son of Madhya Yashoda, Nanda Nandan, the son of Nanda Maharaj. Uh, and then Radha Kanta, the beloved of Srimati Radrani, or Gopinath, the Lord of the Gopis. So then we may approach Radha Gopinath, Srimati Radharani and Krishna, who is the Lord of Srimati Radharani, also known as Radhanath, or Gopinath, the Lord of the Gopis. Uh, so he told Raghunath Das Goswami, who is uh, who specifically giving some instructions in that direction uh, of the highest realm of then even further than just Raghunuga Bhakti, as part of Sadhana Bhakti, the next stage will be Bhav Bhakti. When one is firmly situated on the transcendental platform, so much so the transcendental um, emotions are coming from the heart, from the soul. Nothing to do with the material body and the material consciousness. Beyond the material body and the material consciousness, beyond the three modes of material natures, so this is known as bhav bhakti. Of course, bhav may have mi different meanings, and uh, so even it may just mean some different moods are there. So even when we are here in this world, a sadaka, so even ordinary persons, they have different bhavs, different moods. Uh, so but this bhav bhakti has nothing to do with this material world and material emotions. It is completely transcendental. Uh, so he is giving some guidance in that matter for those who are advanced. <coughs> of course, even the others, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, has also, have also given that. Any Acharya, any spiritual master, he can uh, act as Sambandha Gyan Guru, Abhide Gyan Guru, and Payojan Gyan Guru. And any deity, like even Shama Sundar is in our temple, is rather his Madan Mohan, his Govinda Dev, his Gopinath. Not different. Uh, so, <coughs> so Mahaprabhu told Raghunath Das Goswami, Amani na amana na Krishna namasada labe. So he's explaining about sadhana bhakti. Amani na, manada. Don't expect any honor. Be always very humble. Trinada pi suniche na, tarora pi saishnana. Always very humble. And then give all respect to others. Uh, Krishna Nama Sadalabe and always take Krishna Nam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Kirtaniya Sadahari and Krishna himself says in the Bhagavad Gita Satatam Kirtan Taman always chant my names Amani Nam Anada Krishna Nama Sadalabe Braja, Radha Krishna Seva Manasa Kariba. And then in Braj, Braje, in Braj, Radha Krishna Manasi Seva Kariba. Then you may do the Seva of Radha Krishna within your mind. So, but that is only possible in purified consciousness and having uh, been elevated to the transcendental position. 
And then having heard sufficiently about uh, Radha Krishna and Radha Krishna's pastime. So that is actually the goal, but one has to slowly but surely try to elevate uh, ourselves to that platform from sadhana bhakti to raganuga bhakti to bhav bhakti. From the kanishta, from the new fight stage to the madhyamavasta, to the intermediate stage and then we may come to the uttamavasta, uttam bhakti, to the highest stage of pure devotional service. So it is a gradual process. Uh, and uh, so, but we have to try our best to make more and more advancement. Uh, and uh, so, and of course, if you are fixed, and then if you are always enthusiastic, and if you are patient, then uh, eventually we will attain the goal. Uh, so, but one has to be patient, and so it will take some time. But there is no harm, as Krishna is saying. Even a little endeavor can save us from uh, having to take birth again in lower species. So even if you don't become perfect, but it is guaranteed, if you have taken up this path, then in the next life we'll be able to continue, provided we are humble and respectful, and endeavoring to the best of our ability. Uh, so, and then, uh, so then, uh, then we can be fully conscious of Krishna, but his process of bhakti yoga, by the mercy of the spiritual master and the mercy of Mahaprabhu. And then, so, at the time of death, so one can remember Krishna. Ante Narayana Smriti. So at the end of life, one is supposed to remember Narayana or Vishnu or Krishna. Anta Kale Chama Meva Smaram Mukta Kalevaram. Krishna has explained uh, the next chapter, in the eighth chapter, that at the time of death, what we should do? We should remember Krishna. Uh, and then in the purport, Prabhupada is writing, but it is not so easy to remember Krishna. So it is not so easy to remember Krishna. Uh, so Krishna's beautiful form, although Krishna is most beautiful, most attractive, most charming. And as explained, Shavanam Kirtana Vishnu Smaranam Parasevanam. Achanam Vandanam, Dasyam. So we understand we are the servant. So that is known, this up to Dasyam, that is known as the Vaidimarg. Prabhupada is explained in the third and fourth canto in some purports. This is known as the Vaidimarg. So up to Dasyam. And then comes Sakyam Atmani Vedanam. Sakyam. Oh, Krishna is our best friend. Bhaktaranya Gitapa Samsarva Lokama Heshwaram. First, we have to understand that Krishna is the Supreme Lord and we are the eternal servants of Krishna. In Vaidhi Bhakti. And then, when we are a little more advanced in purified consciousness, a little bit free from the three modes of material nature, a little bit situated on the transcendental platform, then we can understand Suridam Sarva. Bhutanam, that Krishna is the best friend of everyone. He's our best friend. He's always with us, even though we are not always uh, reciprocating with him. Uh, but he's always with us, so he's our best friend. And then we can actually get real shanti, real peace, when we understand that. Uh, the, so that is by practical realization. Uh, Suridam Sarvabhutanam. Uh, Krishna is our best friend. Uh, Dasyam Sakyam. And then it is possible Atmani Vedanam. Then we can be fully surrendered to Krishna. Atmani Vedanam. Sharanagati. So we are trying to come to the shelter of Krishna. Trying to be surrendered to Krishna. So, but to be fully surrendered to Krishna is only possible when we are on a transcendental platform. Sakyam, when we understand in purified consciousness that we are not this body and that Krishna is there in this Satchinananda Sarup, and then the loving exchange is there, relationship is there with our best friend Krishna, then we can fully surrender Atmani Vedanam. 
In the beginning stage, we are trying, we are going to the temple for Mangalati, we are chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So we are trying to be fully surrendered, we are trying to be humble, we are trying to have Drir Vishwas, strong faith. But when the consciousness is not yet purified, if there are still material desires, then we are not able to fully surrender then it is partial surrender, which is okay also, because we have no other choice and we try our best to become more and more advanced, more and more purified in consciousness, so then ultimately we can have this Pakva Dainatva, this real humility and practical realization how insignificant we are as eternal sons of Krishna. Uh, and then we can properly uh, be fully engaged with body, mind and words in the service of Krishna, free from the three modes of material nature. So it takes time and we have to be patient and <coughs> we have to constantly endeavor for pe perfection. And we have to be constantly uh, trying to be absorbed in thinking about Krishna glorify Krishna, hear about Krishna, serve Krishna, serve the devotees, always thinking for the uh, welfare of others, sarva bhuta hite rataha. So that is a devotee, is not selfish, and is not thinking about himself, but is thinking how to serve Krishna, how to serve the spiritual master, how to serve the Vaishnavas, uh, how to give this knowledge to others, how to engage the fallen conditioned souls in the service of Krishna. Always thinking of the welfare of others. Uh, his full energy is engaged in that. So that is actually, yeah, that is an injunction in the scriptures also. That our, man, our life is meant for the benefit of others. So with our consciousness, with our energy, uh, so with our um, abilities, uh, capacities, whatever we have, that should be in, not simply for our own benefit, but ultimately for the Supreme Lord's pleasure and then for the benefit of others, to help others. Uh, so, and then by helping others, then we will be helped also again more by Krishna. Krishna is pleased. Uh, with the devotees who are trying to help others, especially then those who are trying to give the knowledge to others. As Krishna is explaining at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, uh, that those who are uh, distributing this knowledge to others, they are most dear to me. There is no one more dear to me than him who is giving this knowledge to others. Uh, so, sarva bhutehi te rataha, thinking of the welfare of others. Yare de Kataka, Krishna Padesh. Whoever you meet, you give Krishna Padesh. You speak about Krishna. You give the, uh, the instructions which Krishna has given in the Bhagavad Gita to others. Amara Gyaya, Guru Hanatarai Desh. And under my order, you become a spiritual master, you become a guide, and you help others. Wherever you are. Uh, Brahman Dabarite, no, the. Bharat Bhumi te haila manusya janma 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 shataka kara kari pauro pakar. So those in Bharat Bhumi, so they should make their life perfect. And once they have attained um, this perfection, then they should work for the benefit of others. Uh, so, but that is not only for those here in Bharat Bhumi, Bharat Varsha in India. But it's, uh, that is for all those who are actually taking up this Krishna consciousness. And previously, Bharat Varsha was not just this present day of India, but it was all over the world, Bharat Varsha practically. Uh, so, yeah, but now it has become a little bit smaller. Still it is quite big. The, what is known as nowadays India, but they should change that name. Like in India they changed the different names which were given by the British. Bombay, back to Mumbai. What was it? Madras, back to Chennai. 
uh, uh, Calcutta back to Kolkata. But they forgot about India. India is given by the British. And anybody knows what means India? Anybody knows? No. No, 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 nothing with the river Hindus. That is the Hindus beyond the Sindhu River. India means independent nation declared in August. Oh. <laughs> that is India. Independent nation declared in August. Given by the British. They made India. They gave the name. Which is, uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, India came after 47. Before it was Bharat Bhumi or Hindustan. Bharat Bhumi, Bharat Bhumi, Bharat Varsha, that is the real name for India, that is Bharat Varsha. Therefore I try to avoid saying India. I prefer to say Bharat Varsha, Bharat Bhumi. That is the real name for this Punya Bhumi. Most suspicious place where Krishna has appeared, Mahaprabhu has appeared, most incarnation. They appeared close to us here. Krishna very close. Matra only 15 kilometers from here. He appeared here. Mahaprabhu only 1000 kilometers. So, Ram, not far in Ayodhya. And others also. And Shingadev in South India. Maybe one or two appeared in now, you know, ex <coughs> what, what is not anymore Bharadvasa, but before it was maybe. Uh, so, so that is the actual name for this wonderful place here, where there are so many holy places, Bharadvasa. So we prefer to speak about Bharadvasa when we are speaking about what is nowadays known as India or Hindustan. So. Yeah, so that uh, should be changed actually. Maybe eventually it will be changed again by some of the leaders in, in India. <laughs> Bharat Varsha, maybe they will understand that that is the real name and it should be changed. More important than just changing the city. From Bombay to Mumbai, what is Mumbai? <laughs> so, yeah, even, yeah, yeah, so. Um, yes, yeah, so we are very fortunate to be here and uh, so we should try our best to make more and more advancements. So first of all, as explained here, so properly understand that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. Uh, and then go on and go on and then we can understand that Krishna is our best friend and then we can serve Krishna with, with love and affection in purified uh, consciousness. Uh, and then we can uh, make more and more advancement. Nishta, when we are fixed, then comes Ruchi, then we have transcendental pleasure. We feel transcendental pleasure. And then we com become completely attached to Krishna and detached from this material world. And that stage has to be achieved if at the time of death we want to go to Golok. Of course, usually it's not possible to go directly to Golok. Even Prabhupada has mentioned, and uh, one or two purports, and that has been explained by Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur in one of his books, Var Rag Vartma Chandrika, about this process of spontaneous love, which has to be adopted, so we can come to the platform of Surup Siddhi of not just theoretically but practically realizing Krishna's beautiful Sanchidananda Sarup and our Sanchidananda Sarup. That is then known as Sarup Siddhi. And then after giving up this body, we're not going to Golok. But we're going to one of the planets where Krishna is performing his pastimes. And there we'll have to take one more birth from the womb of one of the gopis. And then we will be situated in Vashtu Siddhi. And Prabhupada has explained this in the introduction to the Bhagavad Gita. And there he has explained it as Sarup Ghat and Vashtu Ghat. Same as Sarup Siddhi and Vashtu Siddhi. Then Vastav Vastu, Krishna is Vastav Vastu. 
real substance. And Vastu Siddhi means when we are actually in our transcendental existence, as is such an Ananda Sarup, completely apart from the gross and subtle body. When we are realized and we take birth in one of the planets, in one of the planets where Krishna on, is performing his pastimes, and then uh, so then uh, there we grow up, and then we'll be able to uh, serve under the on the Maria Shoda, under the cowboys boys, or under the gopis' guidance, and become perfect, and that is known as Vastu Siddhi, and then Hari Bol, noble birth. <laughs> Then we are then automatically then transferred also to Golok. So that is explained by Prabhupada and that is mentioned in Vishwana Chakravati Thakur's Rag Vatma Chandrika. So, um, <coughs> so we try our best uh, to attain the highest stage and uh, so which is possible to achieve even in this lifetime, Iyayasya Haridasya Karmarsamara Manasagira Nikhila Shavas Jivan Bhukta Sochate. So if one is fully absorbed uh, as servant of Krishna uh, and with body, mind and words, and then if one is coming to this platform of fully realizing, then uh, so then at uh, the time of death, then uh, one is liberated and one can uh, so enter the pastimes of Krishna and then one will not have to take birth again. And then once one is there with Krishna, then one will never come back to this material world. Or if one is coming, then one will be liberated. So just like when Krishna comes to this world, then he comes with his associates and they're never under the modes of material nature. Or when Mahaprabhu comes and his associates, they're completely free. So once we are completely free, we are completely free. And even if we come in this world to assist the Lord, then we'll be not uh, again conditioned. So, so that is the goal of life and we want to attain that uh, before we give up this body. So we try our best to attain that and uh, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, not so easy. But we try our best. So Prabhupada has explained it also. Uh, well, even he has explained that's his own words. Um, it is impossible. Of course, we should always be positive, and it is possible. At the same time, in his writing, it is pos impossible to go back home to God in one lifetime. But at least one should try our best to attain the goal. So that means. Uh, because Prabhupada different times he says different things but we should reconcile and it is possible to become perfect in one lifetime but at the same time it is not so easy and it's not that everyone who is coming to the Krishna consciousness movement and who has taken initiation that he will attain perfection in this life there are good chances there uh, good chances are there, but it may take more than just one life. But there's no harm, there's no problem. Because anyway our business is to serve Krishna. And then ultimately, if we have to take birth again, it doesn't matter. We simply want to serve Krishna. Even if you have to take birth hundred times more, it doesn't matter, but we are going to serve Krishna anyway. Even if we are not fully liberated, we are just going to serve Krishna. That is our determination. And then we'll be serving Krishna always. And once then we are fully liberated, then we are completely all right. Otherwise, there's a little more struggle there. And sometimes going up and going down, going up and going down. So and we, yeah, so, but uh, we should try to attain perfection in this lifetime. And, but there's no harm and uh, for the devotee, there's no loss and diminution in this process. It is so wonderful. And if one is humble, tolerant, respectful, and constantly endeavoring for perfection, then the, he will always go up. He will always go up, more and more up, till he will attain perfection. And it is guaranteed. But due to being in this material world and 
due to the obstacles, sometimes there's some difficulty and sometimes there's a, a little one is going a little down, then one will go up again a little down. So that is there. Uh, but uh, we just have to be tolerant and patient and then uh, everything is all right, no problem. And we have to always be positive and hope, although sometimes as Rupa Goswami has explained, sometimes it seems to be so difficult. So many difficulties are there, so many problems, so many unwanted things and atas are there. How will I ever become more advanced and fixed and free from all these unwanted things? So it seems to be always almost hopeless, my situation. But then Rupa Goswami is saying, hope against hope, I'm continuing. Seems to be almost hopeless to attain perfection in one lifetime. Uh, so many difficulties, so many anattas. Difficulties usually coming from our own consciousness, our own mind, not from others. Although the tendency is there to blame others. Because of this person, I have this problem or I'm getting disturbed. But basically it is our own problem, mostly. And, if you, and so that is the mood of devotee. So, and then if you are in that mood and hope against hope we continue, then ultimately we'll be successful. Uh, so although it may be difficult. Uh, and it is actually just like in school. So, you know, you go first class, second class, third class and so on. And then you have to pass some exams. And it always seems to be difficult. In the beginning, learning ABC for the small, small little kids is a little difficult, but they, they can do it and they can read and write and they can count and then they have tests. But then as you go on, the tests are more difficult. Then you go from primary to secondary school, then college, high school or university. And you know more, it is more easy from one point of view, but then the exams, the tests are more difficult. And then you want to become a doctor or lawyer or uh, go for PhD, then it becomes more difficult. You know more and more, but it becomes more and more difficult, the tests. So also in spiritual life, we become more and more knowledgeable. And uh, uh, from one point of view, so it becomes easy, but then sometimes the test is coming. And then it becomes again difficult. How I will overcome that, this problem, this difficulty? But then we have to go on and be by Krishna's mercy, by the mercy of Guru Gauranga and Krishna, we can overcome all difficulties. Uh, but sometimes it may take some time and it is also just the nature of the world. Even the Pandavas, therefore their pastimes of there are there, of Krishna, Krishna's devotees, even Krishna himself. In, for example, as uh, in the Ram Lila, so he is undergoing so many difficulties, just to show also that in this material world there are so many problems. Uh, and then the devotees of Krishna, the Pandavas, how many difficulties they had to undergo? So many difficulties. Our difficulties are nothing in comparison to theirs. And therefore, how many years? Twelve years in exile. And the thirteenth year they had to be incognito, not to be seen. And if they were seen by Duryodhana or any one of his men, then they had to do twelve years more again. They had to live incognito, not to be seen for one year. Not so, not so easy. But still somehow they managed. So, yeah, so. But that is just to show they are pure devotees, but it is to show even as pure devotees. Krishna was with them. Krishna was their best friend. Krishna is their best friend. Krishna is their relative in the past time. But still, so many difficulties were there. So just to show us that uh, in this material world there are always difficulties. Due to other living entities, natural catastrophes, and then, uh, then our own body giving difficulty, and then especially our mind giving problem, our own consciousness, and that is actually the biggest problem. If we can control the mind and the consciousness, 
our own, then we can tolerate our physical difficulties and tolerate the difficulties from material nature or from living entities. Or at least it becomes more easy to tolerate and to overcome all the difficulties when the mind is, is controlled and Krishna consciousness. So by mana Krishna Padara Vindayor by remembering Krishna's lotus feet and engaging all the senses in Krishna's seva. So we try our best to attain the goal. Uh, so Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki. Any question? Yes. About this shortcut where oh, I live shortcut. In, I yes. live in Davis. I can do whatever nonsense I want next life. I can birth as a dog or a pig. And then after that, where, where do I go to the spiritual life? Shortcut. You want a shortcut? <laughs> yeah, everyone wants to quickly somehow go back to Godhead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. Uh, but becoming a dog is not so nice. Of course, dog in Vrindavan is very fortunate, he's getting prasad, but still is suffering. And uh, then he may go back to Godhead, but not, uh, uh, not necessarily, not maybe he will have to take birth again as in, in the human form of life and then go back. Even like the, as we know, uh, Nalukevera and Manigriva, they became trees. They became trees. Of course, you may think the God is, the dog is a little more elevated than the tree, but still, ultimately, there's no difference. The jiva is there in the dog body, human body, or the tree body is all the same, but just different external form. So they became trees, and they had saksha darshan of Krishna, and they offered prayers to Krishna. But then they didn't go to Golok directly. They went again to the heavenly planets and stayed there for some time. And then they were able to be liberated. So even one may become a dog or a monk in Vrindavan and then, uh, be, uh, then, uh, and then he will be washed, you know, the uh, offenses which he has done. And then will be cleared and then he may, he may again take birth as a human being in Vrindavan and then they go to the spiritual realm. And it is not like that you can say, okay, he, he got that body and then after that he will go. So the, uh, the laws of karma are difficult to understand or even especially done in Braj. So that is uh, not under the no normal laws of karma. But it is Krishna's sweet will also. And Krishna has his way how he will then purify the living entity, the different ones. and. And um, so we cannot uh, directly say, but it may be there that they may, be, they may just become a dog and have to go back to Godhead, but not necessarily. So, so therefore we should not depend on that. Let me do whatever I want and become a dog and no. then go back. No. <laughs> or just take it easy. But we try our best and try to make more advancement. And uh, so, but if you want a shortcut, uh, there's a way. For example, uh, you can chant more, you can read more, <laughs> you can serve more and give up sense gratification. Sleep less and control your eating. Don't, uh, uh, yeah, do some austerity. Do some austerity. And for example, Chaturmas, Katik Vrat. You perform these vratas and you give up sense gratification, you chant more. Then it, that is the only shortcut. <laughs> Just like you want to go from here to Calcutta in order to go to Mayapur. Uh, well, you can go on Padayatra. <laughs> it takes you maybe eight months walking from here to Mayapur. Or you may take, uh, yeah, you may go with a bullock cart. It will maybe take one month. Or you may, yeah. Or then you may take a train. And then it depends which train. You can take Tufan Express. Tufan means like the, you know, the whirl whirlwind. But the Tufan Express is well known. It's always late. And they announce at the train station, we are sorry to inform you, 
but the train is only late three hours. <laughs> and after three hours, we are f sorry to inform you, but the train is two hours more late. And sometimes you have to wait 10 hours. <laughs> so it may take you 34, 30, more than 30 hours, sometimes 35 hours to go to Calcutta for Matra. But you may get another train, you go to Delhi, you take a train uh, to Delhi, also two hours, um, and then you take a train, Rajdani, uh, which leaves at 5 o'clock and reaches next day at 10 o'clock. So it's only how many hours? Uh, 15 hours. No, 12, five, yeah, 15 hours, 17 hours. 17 hours, and then you take a taxi again, you can be there within 24 hours. Uh, easily, but other way, you know. So, but you can do another way. You go and you take a flight, <laughs> and you can reach easily within uh, ten hours. <coughs> but you know, you have to pay a little more <laughs> if you go with the plane. So you want the sh the fast way, the shortcut. So you have to chant a little more. Okay, <laughs> minimum sixteen rounds, Prabhupada said. Minimum. So chant a little more. That is the only shortcut. Okay? <laughs> All right? Then, yeah? Krishna, Krishna is also playing his pastimes in Goloka. Yes, playing his pastimes in Golok, yes. And you said he, 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 he you have to go to the place. Yes. And take birth to the puppies where he's playing his pastimes and then you will be sure. Yeah, yes, yes. So he, he's also playing his pastimes in Goloka. Yes. So can't you go directly to Goloka? No, no, first you have to take birth in one of the universes where Krishna is performing his Prakatlila. Where he is taking birth, he is appearing, but it doesn't mean he is not in Golok anymore. Krishna is always in Golok. Simultaneously, he is here in Prakatlila also. As a small boy, he is growing up. In Braj, in Golok, he is never growing up. He is Kishoravasta, always 13, 14 years old. But then he is appearing here as a baby and he is growing. That is Prakatlila, but it doesn't mean he's not in Golok. He's always in Golok. But then he's appearing here also. You have to go there, where Krishna is appearing. And then you grow up also, you take your last birth, you grow up to your eternal age, and then you're liberated. Yeah. So that, that, so that is known as Nitya Lila. In Aprakatlila, Nitya Lila, eternal pastimes. And then this in this world here, that is known as Naimitika Lila or Prakat Lila, that manifested. It is simultaneously one and different. Gokul here and Goko, Golog, they are simultaneously one and different. So Krishna is there eternally in Golog, but he is manifesting here as a baby. So that form is, is simultaneously the same as Kisho Krishna. But it is also, to some extent, different because he has taken birth. But simultaneously, one and different. Same Golok in the Aprakatlila and Prakat, it is simultaneously one and different. So with the material intelligence, you cannot understand. Again, you nicely chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So by chanting Hare Krishna, you can realize. Uh, so even I can try to explain, but you can only understand by doing bhajan, by chanting the holy names and by seva bhav, by seva, by doing seva, by having this mood that I have to serve Krishna, I have to please Krishna. Then you can realize, like Krishna is explained, when he comes in this material world, in this prakat lila, all the incarnations are with him. Nrishinga avatar, everyone is with him when he's coming here, even when he's playing with the boys. And therefore, there's sometimes a demon is coming. And then actually is mentioned, sometimes it is said, Vishnu or Vasudev Krishna is killing the demon. But Jain Nandan Chamsunda is just playing. He's not making his hands dirty with the blood of these demons, these bloody demons. <laughs> But that is Vasudev Krishna who is killing them. And now, for example, you know when Krishna is dancing with the gopis? When Krishna is dancing with the gopis, 
then Vasudev, Krishna, Vishnu, Narayan, they are not there. That is mentioned in one book, Gopal Chand, uh, Dhyan Chand Goswami's book. Uh, so then all the, everyone who has come with Krishna, who is with Krishna, all the different expansions or whatever, Ram, Rishingadev, Vasudev, they are with Krishna. And then Vasudeva Vishnu is killing the demons. But when Krishna is with the gopis, they all go up somewhere in the sky. <laughs> and Krishna is dancing with the gopis. Well, only one time, yeah. But otherwise, no, they didn't accept. But otherwise, when Krishna is there in Nikunja Lila at night time, all these incarnations are not there. They leave. And Krishna is alone with the gopis. Vasudev Krishna, he cannot embrace the gopis. Only Krishna is embracing the gopis. They're all somewhere up in the sky or going to their abode for a little while. And then Krishna again is together at home and then with the cowboys. And they all come again in the body. So. With the material intelligence, we cannot understand all these things. So, but when we nicely chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, then it is revealed to us. Hare Krishna. Last question. Yes, so much we are emphasizing on Krishna. Yes. But sometimes our mind is diverted into its different forms. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. The main focus is Krishna and Braj. Yashoda Nanda or Gopinath. Is our Ishtadeva. Radya Bhagavan Brajesha Taniya Stadhama Vrindavanam. Ramya Kachitu Pasana Brajabad Varganiya Kalpitaha. Simad Bhagavatam Purana Mamanam. Prema Pumatamaham. Sri Chaitan Mahaprabhu Madam Idam Tatra Dana Paraha. That is the opinion of Mahaprabhu. Explained by Vishwana Chakravati Thakur. And Prabhupada, he quoted that verse many times in his lectures. Aradya Bhagavan, Brajesha Tanya, Staddhama Vrindavanam. Our Aradya Dev, our Ishtadev, that is the son, of, the son of the king of Braj, Krishna. And similarly, the worshipable abode is Vrindavan Dham. And then he's explaining on the most exalted form of Upasana of worship. And that is the worship of the gopis, the love of the gopis. That is most exalted. <coughs> uh, so that is our main focus. But then we have to hear also about the process of devotional service, the different incarnations, because then we can learn as sadhakas to be fixed. And then we can enter into the higher realm. So we have to hear about Vishnu, also about Ram. And there is no harm. To hear about Ram, he's also Krishna. He's an expansion of Krishna. But then we have to focus still on Krishna. But then we hear about that. And by the way, you know, we have to do so many ordinary things, especially household or even as brahmachari, you have to wash the, your cloth. You have to think about your cloth. You have to go to the bathroom, right? You have to eat. What to do? So, you know, but thinking of Vishnu, uh, it's better than thinking about washing your clothes or I have to eat my lunch and breakfast. So no problem, you can think of about Vishnu, you can speak about Vishnu, about Ram, about Nishinga Dev. Uh, and that is uh, no problem, that is beneficial. And you become fixed. But the main focus then is Krishna and Braj. If you want to go to Braj, and so that is uh, very clear. That should be the main thinking is about Krishna and Braj. Okay? Bhagavad Gita ki. Yeah.